today's class is on heresies what do you mean by heresy heresy simply means wrong teachings or we can say the teachings that are not right it may be very difficult today to distinguish which is the right doctrine and which is a wrong doctrine but how these heresies developed in christianity and the heresies that we see today and the heresies that was present in the early centuries were entirely different how these heresies started as the church struggled to define her doctrine there arose many heretical teachings so when the church clearly defining what is the doctrine of the church then arose many heresy or heretical teachings and some of them like gnosticism and manichaeanism cannot really be called heresies because they did not emerge from christian groups or christian thoughts but they resembled christian teachings on many points used by many christian terms and confused the minds of many people as the leaders of the church grappled with the heretical teachings the need for a clear formulation of two doctrine was felt and so creedal statements developed this is how the creeds and the creedal statements developed in christianity so some of the heretical teachings like gnosticism and manichaeanism they were not originated from christianity it was from the greek philosophical systems but when christianity adopted some of the thoughts from gnosticism and manichaeanism then that also became part of christian heresy let us go through some of the heretical teachings first one is gnosticism Gnos- gnosticism is one of the major heresies that was addressed even by paul in his epistles but the origin of gnosticism is not known but some people suggest it may have come from simon whose name was mentioned in acts 8 but this is dismissed as untenable by most scholars some ancient scholars or theologians like tertullian irenaeus and hippolytus believed that it originated in greek philosophy what are the teachings of this gnosticism gnosticism denied that the good god created the world so that is the first wrong teaching denial that the good god created the world and that all material things are evil since all matter is evil and spirit is good since matter is evil and only spirit is good how a good god can create this material world that is what first wrong teaching that the gnostics taught in the early christianity secondly denial of the real incarnation of jesus christ because when if we say god became flesh there is a problem because flesh is a matter and matter is evil there are mainly two groups and two types of uh, thoughts regarding the denial of the real incarnation of jesus christ one group believed that the divine spirit came upon the man jesus at the time of his baptism and then left him again 
at the time of crucifixion and they said at the time of his baptism human jesus christ became divine and at the time of his crucifixion the spirit left jesus christ another group believed that jesus humanity was not real it was docetic or ghostly or phantom or shadow like appearance that means there was no real person called jesus lived on this earth it was just a docetic appearance or a kind of ghostic appearance and the third wrong teaching taught by the gnostics was regarding salvation they said salvation is by knowledge only a knowledgeable person will be saved and the last one is they denied the resurrection of the body body after the death of a person his body will never resurrect because flesh or the body is material so it never resurrect after the death these are the wrong teachings of gnosticism next martianism martian was born in a place called sinope in asia minor and he settled in rome he was a very rich man and he gave liberally to the church and there was and was therefore very influential of course when people started giving more to the church they will become very influential but because of his false teaching he was excommunicated from the church and then set up his own church with many followers his teaching accepted only for a short time in the roman empire lingered on in persia till at least the 9th century so at least till 9th century these teachings or teachings of martian or martianism was prominent in persia his teaching bordered on that of gnosticism he taught that the loving god of jesus the loving god of jesus the father cannot be the god of the old testament who was cruel and unjust so when martian look at the god we see in the old testament he cannot accept that god as the father of jesus christ who is a loving god and a kind and merciful god for him the old testament god was a cruel god so he may not be the father of lord jesus christ jesus father is a loving god good and kind therefore the old testament god and new testament god cannot be the same jesus came to the world to reveal the good god here to for unknown or the good god was unknown to human beings and jesus christ came to this world to reveal that unknown loving god the father of lord jesus christ and he also said jesus had only a docetic appearance as the gnostics believed he taught that in jesus christ all the jewish laws were done away and a new and much higher order of morality replaced the jewish law therefore extreme ascetism should be practiced so he said in jesus christ all the jewish laws were done away and a new and much higher order of morality replaced the jewish law 
therefore extreme ascetism should be practiced however we know in the bible jesus christ very clearly said i came not to abolish the law but to fulfill the law so that is why we consider marianism as a heresy and he again compiled a canon of sacred scripture for use in his church which includes 10 epistles of paul and the gospel of luke he cut down all the passages which implied that jesus accepted the old testament god and all forms of jewish ceremonial laws so he made a canon the pers- a person who first made a canon a canon for um for using in his bible was marcian so he used just 10 epistles of paul and the gospel of luke <coughs> one positive effect of marcianism upon the church was that the church fathers felt the need to decide which scripture was to be accepted as true scriptures so because of the marcians canon the church seriously started thinking of accepting a biblical a biblical canon that is how we received the 27 books as the new testament canon so the first person who made a canon for christians or for using in his church was marcian and because of marcianism the orthodox church really wanted to have a biblical canon and they made it by accepting 27 books of the new testament next heresy is manichaeism this was not really a heresy but a new philosophical religion but it exerted a strong influence on many christians so it is also was taken very seriously mani was a persian and began his teaching in tesiphon in about ad 242 he taught that good and evil or light and darkness were eternal principles opposed to one another and this philosophy also influenced the early church a lot so manichaeism said both light and darkness were equal power and when good wins or light wins then god wins and when darkness wins that means the evil wins then satan wins actually that is not right god is supreme and god is the source of all type of powers in this world that is why we consider manichaeism as a heresy next one is montanism by the middle of the second century many people left the church felt that church was growing worldly and tended to secularism many felt that the inspiration of the holy spirit was declining seriously the sign of that being the disappearance of the office of the prophets and of the gift of tongues montanus was a priest of sibele in ardabu prigya before he was converted to christianity he made his appearance about ad 156 and he was soon joined by two prophetesses they were their names were prisca and maximila and these two women left their husbands and joined with montanius he claimed to receive a fresh inspiration of the holy spirit and began a movement of protest against the orthodox church so montanism was not a heresy at first 
but a protest movement protesting against the growing formalism worldliness and disregard of the spontaneous gifts of the holy spirit but it it became a heresy when it exaggerated certain teachings to the extreme so in the beginning it was not considered as a heresy but when they started exaggerating certain revelations that the spontaneism was also considered as a heresy thank you